importance in two-dimensional space. And I like this. Let's just read the sentence because it's very helpful. What is a resultant? It is the simplest force combination. The simplest force combination which can replace a given system of forces without alter altering the external effect on the rigid body. Okay? Simplest force combination re that replaces a system of forces without altering the external effect. Okay? <clears throat> so we can just extend what we've learned so far to three dimensions. So I like pictures. So here again we've got a body, we've got three forces, it can be any number of forces. How do we reduce this to a resultant? We again we take the forces, we place that place them at some arbitrary point that we select. Okay? And then we sum up those forces to get a resultant force, but because we have moved them to a certain point, we need to also take into account their rotational effect about that point. Okay, so F1 will cause a moment about O, and it's re it's represented there by that vector. F2 will cause a moment about O, so it's represented there. And F3 will also cause a moment about O. And it's represented there. So I think we get the idea. Then, as I said, your forces then, you can add them up and get a resultant force, a vector sum R. And then also vectorially add up your moments to get a resultant moment here. Okay, so this is essentially what we're saying here. And um, then, so this is in three dimensions. I like this paragraph says here, the point O selected as the point of concurrency <clears throat> for the forces is arbitrary. Right? Right, if you've got the forces, you can select any point you want. Right, it's up to you. Any, any point could be your O. But as you change your point um, of concurrency, what changes? This is the question. So the magnitude and direction of M depend on the particular point selected. What do we mean by that? Can you see here that if we selected that point there to be our O, that we would, so we would take the forces and place them there at that point, and you see that we would get the same resultant R if we, if we put them at that point, but the moments would change. The couples would change, right? Because if I took that force, put it there, and then I needed to put in another one over there, can you see that there's my couple, and it, it has a much larger um, perpendicular distance than if we chose O as our reference frame, right? Our reference point. So the M, the this M here, the resultant moment does depend on the particular point that we select, but the magnitude and direction of R um, does not depend. It is the same no matter which point is selected. Okay. So in general, um, in dynamics, in dynamics, we choose the mass center as that reference point. So remember the, the center of mass, if you've got an object, the center of mass is as if all the mass is located at that point, right? And so we, we would choose this as our point of our reference point, and we would apply these above techniques, okay? So that point in dynamics, we would choose that as that point to be the center of mass. Okay. All right. The next one I'm going to look at these next section on concurrent parallel forces, etc.